Can we say thank you to the Wee Choir? Are they not so awesome? You guys did a great job. Way to go. High five. Oh, ah, oh, ah. Anybody else? Ah, oh, ah, oh. Anybody else? Whoa. Oh, you didn't get to? No, I don't even. I know you. I know you down there on the end. I know you over there. Don't! All right, well, let's give it up for our Wee Choir. They are awesome. All right, can we get the house lights on so I can see what's going? Is there another one? Oh, okay. All right, they're done. Where are you going? You going to go sit with Mom and Dad? They're going to go out there first, and then they're going to go sit with mom and dad. Okay, sounds good. Ace is a plant. He's here to keep me on my toes. Well, you didn't even see him? You guys are all famous. Well, I want to personally welcome you to Grace Community Church. We love that you are here. I know that uh, at, with the holidays comes the, the visiting of family members. I, we, we say this at all of the different holiday events. I know that like my daughter's back in town. I'm really glad that she's back here. And so uh, we have family that are visiting. If, if this is your first time at Grace Community Church, welcome. We're really glad you're here. In your bulletin is a card. Uh, if you fill that out and drop it in the offering a little bit when it goes by, we, we would love to just send you some information about the church and tell you that we love you. And we want to dedicate uh, some babies this morning. It's one of my favorite things that we do here. And I'm looking around to see if um, the twins made it. Are the twins here? I'm, I can't see, so forgive me if they're not. Okay, so the twins didn't make it, which means Kaysen is our dedication this morning. And uh, why don't the Vons come up and the family that's with the Vons come up? We want to, pro <gasps> yeah, here they come. The real pretty ones are making their way up here first. Where is Kaysen? He's still out there. We got to get him. <laughs> He's with the weak wire somewhere. Okay, that's all right. We really are more organized than this. He's turning me off. Maybe. Check. Did it die, Justin? Okay. What's up, buddy? Hey, Terry. Can I give you a hug right here? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Here comes the star of the dedication. What's up, Kason? How are you, buddy? Did you, were you just singing? Yeah, that's pretty important. Well, this is Kaysen, and uh, I'm not going to go into all of Kaysen's story right now, but uh, Brian and Christina have, uh, are you going to be part of the, you want to be part of the dedication today? We're going to pray. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we're just going to pray, so she's family, we're family. Uh, Kaysen is a welcomed addition to this family. And uh, Brian and Christine, how long ago was it that the adoption was official? In March. It was in March. And uh, I know the process has been much longer than that, and, and now is not the time to, to share that whole story. But I want to say to you, because I know the story, wow. And thank you. And you are rescuing him. 
and congregation, I know you don't know the whole story, and so there's a lot of um, private conversation, I guess, and I don't mean for it to be that way, but you are going to raise a man of God, and I am so blown away by your love and your grace and your perseverance in the process. And uh, hey, Kason, you want to come over here by me for a second? Can I pray for you? Yeah. Is that all right? All right. Well, Lord, I thank you for Mr. Kason. I thank you that you have brought this young man into my life and into the life of this family and this church family. Lord, I pray just a blessing over him. Lord, I pray that his mind would be guarded. I pray that he would know all the days of his life that he's accepted and he's loved and he's cared for. Lord, we uh, partner with Brian and Christina and, and we say that, uh, Lord, you, you've, you've called him and you will call him at a young age and he will know you and he will come to serve you, Lord. I pray that he would know that he has a plan and a purpose because you've ordained it, Father. Lord, I pray blessing over Brian and Christina as they are raising Kaysen and over this entire family. Lord, you have brought so much joy through Kaysen. And we know he's going to be a mighty, mighty man of God. Lord, I just pray that you would be with him. Lord, I, I want to speak over any uh, negative generational curses that might be on him. And we break them in the name of Jesus. Lord, the helmet of salvation that will guard his mind is placed on him forever. And we thank you for Kaysen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you, buddy. Yeah, I love you too. We have a, a Bible somewhere up here and uh, uh, a certificate to give you. You guys are awesome. I love you. I love you. All right, well, you guys can make your way down. It seems like maybe they came. Yeah, all right, awesome. We have uh, also Chloe and Caleb that we're going to dedicate this morning. Way to go, Tanner. You're an official Vaughn for the day. Come on in, sister. We have Chloe and Caleb. We are going to pray over and we're going to dedicate as well this morning. They snuck in just a minute ago. Now, they're like a week old or something, right? Two weeks. I don't, I'm not holding your two week old. No, I'm kidding. Are these babies not just adorable? Oh, we're holding another baby. Our baby's crying. <laughs> it's okay. You're not being replaced, I promise. I promise. I promise. Well, we want to pray blessing. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Lord, we thank you for Caleb and for Chloe. These beautiful babies. We thank you that their mom is choosing to raise them in, in the admonition of you. Lord, I pray blessing over this family. I ask that you would give them wisdom. I ask that you would give them favor and blessing. Lord, we pray over Caleb and Chloe that they would uh, know you at a young age. Lord, we pray that over all of our kids, that they would understand and identify who you are as Lord and Savior as early as possible and that they would choose to serve you all the days of their life. Lord, we pray blessing over them. We pray that they would uh, rise up to be a man and a woman of the Lord, and that they would lead men and would lead women to you, Father. Lord, I pray that you would help them in this new life. Two weeks old, mom raising two babies. Lord, I pray blessing over her strength, joy, and peace, and health. Lord, blessing and provision, you are, you are mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. They are adorable. This is the first I get to meet them. I mean, like, he could go home with me, right? It'd be okay, except Timothy was crying. No, thank you. Rory, I'm going to give this to you.
Well, this is our kind of kids Sunday, and uh, we are uh, blessing all of our kids. What an amazing day already, and uh, worship was amazing, and seeing the wee choir and the baby dedications. I do have just a couple quick announcements for you. The, the first announcement is um, this coming Sunday, a week from today, we're going to do a Christmas Eve service. It's, it happens to be Christmas Eve, and so uh, at 10 in the morning, we're going to do a one-hour family communion. We want you to come and be part of it, and then you know it'll be focused on uh, just finding out, hearing about who Jesus is, what he did for us, and then uh, just I, I really believe in closing that time with the completion. The birth doesn't mean anything without the death and the resurrection. And so we, we go through the whole gamut on Sunday morning. We want you to come and we want you to be part of that. Uh, two weeks from today, we're having our celebration service. And so we want to hear about all that God has done in your life. We're just going to give the Lord praise and give Him glory. Uh, and uh, there's a bunch of other things you can see in the bulletin. You don't need uh, for me to, to read that to you. Um, so if our ushers would come forward, this is our opportunity to give to the Lord. I love praying in unity. Crystal, would you come up here? If you are giving this morning and your, your spouse is here, uh, would you just kind of hold hands with them and, and just in unity? There's power in agreement where two or three are gathered. He's in the midst. Lord, I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you that you're our provider. I thank you that in this room, Lord, not just my wife and I, but in this room we are all gathered. So whether we're single or we're married or our spouse is here or not here, we are gathered in unity this morning, believing that you uh, are going to provide because you are faithful. Lord, as we give, I pray blessing over the giver. Lord, as they are faithful in obedience to what you've asked. And Lord, we pray blessing over the ministries that you've asked us to do here at the church and that we would be faithful and good stewards. Lord, I, I ask as we go into this season, Lord, we're, we're just a, a week away from Christmas and we're two weeks away from starting 2018, that we would finish this season well and blessed and we would head into next year abundantly blessed, Father. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. I have one more announcement and then I'm going to turn it over to the rest of the, the kids' choir. Um, uh, this is our Kids Sunday, and uh, I know that our teenagers don't like to be called kids, but they're still kids, uh, and uh, because I have teenagers that are kids, I can call them kids, and uh, everybody who is a, a regular attender of Grace would know that uh, Pastor Steve is transitioning at the end of the year, and we have walked this process out, and I wanted to make you aware that we have hired a new youth pastor, and I am excited uh, to tell you about it. We're not going to uh, bring them up and pray over them and do all of that stuff today. We're going to wait a few weeks and do that uh, right after the first of the year. But I want to, to let you know that we have hired David and Kara Stein, and we are excited that they're going to be our next youth pastors. And uh, uh, can we just, you guys can stand real quick so that they know who you are. But we're excited about what God's going to be doing in our youth ministry. And, uh, and so praise the Lord that God is faithful and abundant. And uh, Leo, I'm going to turn this over to Tracy. Is that right? So Tracy, would you come up and tell us all about what's going to be happening? By the way, I don't know if you know this or not. I, I now have to refer to her as Master. Because she got her Master's on Friday. And that is worthy of congratulations. We are so excited for you, Tracy. And in all of that, you still helped pull this off. You're amazing. Thank you. That's because I actually finished classes in November. <laughs> so, well, um, I just want to say thank you for coming. And when we started planning for this show, what we asked ourselves was, what do we really want for our kids to walk away from when they... Uh, after this show is over because we thought we can do something that's amazing, we can do something that's funny, and we can do something that's cute. But at the end of the day, what we really want is for them to understand the miraculous birth of Jesus and the gift that that was for our world. And so we thought about it and we decided that we would create a play that we hoped helped them to understand what that is. And while we hope that you think it's amazing and cute and funny, what we really hope is that you walk away with a better understanding of the miraculous birth of Jesus. And so I'm happy to present the modern day Messiah.
I'm going to take this blackout moment to say that normally we do a big show and production for you, but today we want to celebrate with you. So when it's time to sing, we invite you to stand up and join with us as we celebrate this story. Our story begins at a local Starbucks. Our heroine, Mary, is working with a couple of friends, but little does she know, something amazing is about to happen. I can't wait till our wedding this summer. Joseph is such a great guy. He works hard, he's kind, he's respectful, he, and he loves the Lord. He is going to make a great husband. Aren't you a little young? Maybe, but we love each other, so it's all good. If you say so, I still say 19, still too young. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. How can I help you? I would like a grande mocha, fatty milk, no chocolate, and extra red cream. Coming right up. Hold on. But how? I am not married yet. The Holy Spirit will visit you. The power of, of the highest will hover over you. Therefore, the child will be called Holy, the Son of God. Okay, even though that sounds totally crazy, I mean, I see that it's serving the Lord, so I'll do it. Did you know that your baby boy 
Mary decides to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, an up-and-coming fashion designer, for some advice. She's 70 and very pregnant. You see that guy sitting on the stool right there? That's Zachariah. But uh, don't expect to hear much out of him. He hasn't been talking much the past eight months. <laughs> Elizabeth, you look great. I mean, you always look great, but your style is on point. Thank you. It won't be long now. What happened to Zachariah? Gosh, I hope he's all right. How did you know? The moment you showed up, my baby jumped to my belly. I've never felt anything like it. Your baby is special. You would never believe what happened. I was taking out the trash at work, and this random man told me that God wanted me, me, to be the mother of his son. I know, totally crazy, but I just don't know what Joseph will say. He doesn't know yet. Joseph is a good guy. Maybe he'll understand. So is Zachariah, and look what happened to him. <laughs> well, well, you got me there. <laughs> but anyway, I have a great new fall line. You better come and see it. I have some awesome winter collections. Awesome. After four months of living with Elizabeth uh, for, and getting advice, Mary decides to visit Joseph in his apartment. But uh, as soon as she enters, as soon as she enters, <laughs> Joseph can tell something is definitely very different about her. And uh, he doesn't look happy. Joseph, it's not what you think. This baby is from God, I promise. Really? Do you think I'm stupid? <laughs> uh, well, Joseph, you have to believe me. When I was taking out the trash at work, an angel came to me and told me that God wanted me to be the mother of his son. You have to believe me and telling the truth. I don't know, Mary. I don't think we can get married anymore, but I won't embarrass you in front of everybody. Just leave me alone. Joseph, please think about what you're saying. This baby is from God, I promise. Mary leaves saddened, and Joseph goes to sleep, distraught and confused.
Mary, we have to go to Bethlehem, Texas for the census. <laughs> <laughs> but Joseph, I'm very close to having this baby. It's okay, I'll take care of you. Okay, Better Joseph. Because my car is broken. <laughs> okay, Joseph, I trust you. As Mary and Joseph start on their long journey, we have some local astronomers that are studying and preparing for the birth of a new star.
of Orient are Bearing gifts we travel so far Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, oh star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Incense to offer have I, incense songs I deity night, praising all men, raising worship him God most high. After a very long journey, we see Joseph and Mary <laughs> We have concessions outside? No, not really. You want to hear like the best poem ever? Okay, so get this. Roses are red. My name is Dave. This poem makes no sense. Microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, okay. after a very long journey, Joseph and Mary arrive in Bethlehem and just in time. Joseph, it's time. This baby is coming. Right now, in the street? We don't have much time. We need to find a place. We can try this far right. Yes, we need a place to stay, and my wife is about to have a baby. No room here. So many people are traveling today, but we can stay in that barn. That's all that we have to do, Mary. Let's go. Okay.
Those two, you were right. My guys were right, not me. Don't be afraid. This is an awesome opportunity for everyone everywhere. A Savior who has just been born, a Savior who is Messiah and Master, a Savior born in, in barn, wrapped in a blanket. Um, he will bring hope to the whole world. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart prepare His room. In heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Learn in their songs and flowers, our fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sound in joy. And it is here that our story ends, with the magnificent birth of Jesus Christ. But the true beauty of Christmas is that this story is just the beginning. And as C.S. Lewis said, once in our world, there was a stable that had something in it that was bigger than our whole world. Thank you, Merry Christmas, and may the true gifts of Christmas be with you. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Guys, let's just give them one more time a super big round of applause. Thank you to Erica and Tracy and David and Janice and uh, Kayla and everybody that helped with the play. Um, I'm going to dismiss the kids. You guys could go back to kids' church. Just manage to stay out of trouble for another 10 minutes, okay? Um, I am, this is going to sound like a joke, but it's serious. I lost a t-shirt. Is there a white t-shirt anywhere? In one of the seats? No? Has anybody seen a white t-shirt earlier today? Darn it. Um, when I read the script for the play, I thought to myself, <laughs> I had never really thought how weird of a story that would be in today's day and time. And so I had this random epiphany. I said this would have only worked out once in the real time that it happened and probably in the late 90s when Jerry Springer was on TV because <laughs> it was that type of scenario. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys really, really briefly. Um, it's the Christmas holiday, and there's a lot of things going on. I, myself, still have two more things to do before the end of the day today. It's just that type of uh, time of the year um, that there's just a lot of things going on. Um, I wanted to share with you guys a story of something that happened to us when we were in Cuba this summer. Um, on the second or the third day that we were in Cuba, we had finally kind of made it out of Havana, and we were you know, starting to venture further away from the city. And we had an afternoon that we spent the afternoon playing soccer with some kids that were just in the neighborhood. Um, and when I say some kids, I don't mean like one of the pastor's kids or some of the congregants' children. I'm talking about just kids that were playing soccer out in a grass field, it, not even in a soccer field because the goals were like one orange cone on one side and a stick on the other. 
And uh, some of the most ad more adventurous people on the mission team were playing soccer with them. Uh, I went out there just because I spoke Spanish and I was kind of just, you know, pretending to be busy and uh, so I wouldn't have to run. But um, I got to talking with the kid and they decided that we were going to go back to the church. Um, and I said, you know, if you want, you can come. And he said, oh, no, uh, I think I won't. And I said, no, seriously, you know, I have some snacks in my backpack, you know, and, and you know, I just kind of begged him to come. And so he came with me, and I said, as we were walking away from the soccer field, I said, do you want to get your shoes or something? And I mean, like, unapologetic, like, not in a sad way or anything. He just, like, looked right at me, and he goes, I don't have shoes. And I said, oh, okay, you know, and this wasn't, like, a, a sad moment or anything. It was just kind of like, okay, he doesn't have shoes. And I said, okay. And so as we were walking, it dawned on me that, like, he was just going to come in his shorts, and he had no shoes and no T-shirt on. And we walked over there, and about two-thirds of the way over there, I had in my little, like, sack that I was carrying an extra T-shirt for one of my kids. And I just took the T-shirt out, and it was a Dallas Tiger T-shirt. It's around here somewhere, I promise. I don't know where I left it, but um, I just, I gave it to him, and I said, here you go, put this on, you know, so the sun, it was really hot, and he put it on. He said, thank you, and we went to the church. The, that afternoon we invited everybody to come back the following day and uh, did we do food or candy or ice cream or what did we do i don't know we did something and the kids came back and so we did kids church in the back and off they went at the end of the service and uh you know there was a lot of us things were busy i looked over on the stage and there was the t-shirt i gave the kid and i like just ran over and i got it and i asked the lady i said where did this come from and she said oh uh i don't know and i said where is uh i forgot his name right now like oh, i can't remember his name i said where is that kid and she said oh he lives over there i ran out to the side of the road and i saw him walking down the street and i caught up to him and i said hey man i said i this is for you to have you can keep it and he looked at me again like <laughs> unapologetically very serious and he said yeah i know and i was like oh and I'm like, you forgot it. And then he said something that it took me a couple of days to even process. He said, no. He said, I took it off and I put it in the offering. And he said, they said that everybody was giving, you know, their best that day. And he said, and that was the best thing that I had. And of course, you know, me and my authoritative standpoint, you know, I said, no, no, no. I said, this is, this is for you to have. And he said to me, I know. He said, that's, I gave it. It was the best thing that I had. And he's standing there in front of me, no shoes, no t-shirt, you know, just walking back to his house. And in that moment, I had this random epiphany, I guess, this, this deep understanding that I'd given it to him and he comprehended that. He comprehended that I was giving it to him and that it now belonged to him. And now it was just okay for me to understand that that's what he was giving to the Lord. And it was the best thing that he had. And for all intents and purposes, it is just the t-shirt, but it's a very nice t-shirt. It's like one of those heavy cotton ones. We take great pride on the baseball team with those. But as we're enjoying this holiday season, it's an opportunity for us to be like that kid and to say, what do I have that's the best? What is it? You know, is it, can I be a, an incredible neighbor to somebody down my street, down the street from me? Can I take somebody groceries? Um, what is it that we can do? There's people out there that, you know, in case you haven't noticed, they don't enjoy the holidays. There's a lot of people out there that are texting somebody saying, oh man, I got to go to my mom's house this, you know, holiday season. I can't, can't believe it. There's other people that are just spending the holidays by themselves. There's a lot of people that are out there that have a lot of need. And this is an opportunity where God has chosen us. He doesn't need us. We're going to sing a song in a second that says exactly that he doesn't need you he doesn't need me but he chooses us and he chooses us and he wants us to grow his kingdom and if we're obedient and we'll do that if we'll make that a priority then a lot of peace will come into our life so if you have a situation you know like i know i have a situation where you might have a friend or a family member that just makes things difficult you know you might have a circumstance where you feel like there's somebody that the whole year I don't have an excuse to call I would challenge you to take this opportunity this holiday season to pray about it first pray for peace read your Bible I'm not saying to read your Bible so that you could like I could call Randy and be like Psalms 22 man 
not like that. I mean so that I could have direction and so that I could understand what do I want to say to someone that I want to reach out to? How can I change their life? So many times, you know, it feels like you got to read your Bible and then, you know, call your family and spank them with it. It's not about that. Read your Bible and get some conviction for yourself, for things that you've said, for opinions that we've had, for things that we have said out of time, out of place that have hurt somebody's feelings. You know what? If you love the Lord and you're serving him, that's awesome. If you have family that isn't loving the Lord and isn't serving them, then humble yourselves so that we could reach them so that next year for Christmas, hopefully, they can be here with us. And it isn't a circumstance that's like uncomfortable or we're dragging people to church. Like I said, God doesn't need us, but he chose us.